How lonely sits the city that was once full of people. How like a widow she has become. She that was great amongst the nations. She that was a princess among the provinces has become a vassal. So begins the book of Lamentations in the Hebrew scriptures. These words were written in response to a series of tragic events. The empire of Babylon had utterly conquered and destroyed the city of Jerusalem, raised the temple to the ground that was the center of their relationship with God, and hauled a whole bunch of them off to exile in Babylon. Well, I can't really compare the conquest of an entire nation with our current pandemic. I could not help but think about this first verse as I drove through the empty streets of Seattle this last week. Streets that were once full were now deserted. Few people were out and about. Restaurants that had been bustling were now quiet and empty. And the weight of this pandemic was heavy in the air. And in this time of fear and uncertainty, these words of lament, they really hit home for me. Because one thing this pandemic has brought to light is that we as a society are really bad at grieving and lamenting. We want to move directly to solutions, to fix all that is happening. We are collectively experiencing a tragic event, yet I hear constant calls to downplay this experience that we are having. Learn a new skill, find some new normal rhythms. Don't let this all get you down. Be positive. We'll get through this. We can be so desperate for hope and looking on the bright side that we fail the important step of lamenting. In reality, this pandemic has killed thousands of people and utterly transformed our ways of life. And it is so tempting to cling to the small pieces of normalcy in the midst of this chaos. It's understandable. And we in the church are not immune from this temptation. When this pandemic hit, us churches were sort of left scrambling to figure out what we're going to do, how we're going to keep going. And we did so many things to keep going. We will still have worship. We'll just do it online. We'll do it with Zoom or Facebook or YouTube. We'll still have our meetings. They'll just have to look a little bit differently. Remember, the church is not a building. It's people. We are here. We might just look a little bit different. We did everything could we could to keep things normal. But in that rush to keep the status quo, it is so easy to miss lament, to avoid looking directly at the pain and the suffering this has all caused. Well, I get this desire to avoid that pain and suffering or to put a more hopeful gloss over it. In doing so, we hinder part of what makes us the church. Because it is through the practice of lament that we are not only able to be present to the pain and the suffering in our world, but are also able to work toward the inbreaking of the kingdom of God's love and justice here on this planet. Because lament, the act of lament, is so much more than just being sad. It's an act of solidarity with all those who experience pain and oppression. It's a recognition that not all is right in our world. And if we're going to be about the gospel work of joining God to make this world a little bit more right, then we must be willing to sit side by side with people in communities that have experienced harm and oppression and pain and let them know that we see that things are not okay. Let them know that we see them. Lament is both an act of solidarity and an act of hope. As Sun Cheng Ra says in his book, Prophetic Lament, Lament in the Bible is a liturgical response to the reality of suffering and engages God in the context of pain and trouble. The hope of lament 
is that God would respond to human suffering that is wholeheartedly communicated through lament. I believe that one way that we as the church can live out the good news of God's love and justice during this time of pandemic is to rediscover lament, this ancient practice that we can do together. To model this act of solidarity might not come easily to us as individuals or as a community, but it can help us live into the salvation that God wants to see break into our world. So I invite us all as individuals and as a church community to learn over these next few weeks to practice lament together, to practice grieving not only this pandemic, but all the ways in we experience suffering in our world, all the ways that oppression exists in our world. Because I truly believe the better we are able to lament, to see, to notice, to sit with the suffering, the better we will be able to love our neighbors and love our world. Let us do this together.